Okay, so uh, before we uh, get started with this, okay, remember we moved your evaluation from today back a day to tomorrow. So we'll wrap uh, materials up today. So one aspect, we've always, well, we spent time on flotations of fish, okay? So get past the myaxini, that class, which is what type of fish? Okay, so those lampreys, eels, hagfish, or the knotfish. Then we move on to sharks, or the chondrocetes. What's true about their flotation? Three things, and yes, they, they do propel themselves forward. That's how it starts. Okay, so what do they have to aid themselves? Because fish are heavier than water, remember. Pectoral fin, that will help. The oil, which is called squalene, and then that has what source then? Where does it come from? It comes from the liver. Okay, then when we talk about flotation in bony fish, two ways that that's accomplished, okay? What are possibly those two ways that bony fish will, per se, regulate their depth? The swim, the swim bladder or gas gland is one, and then it's one we talked about yesterday. It has something to do with what we called or classified the current exchange system. Starts with an R. Reet mirable. Okay? And what that is, it's one thing to say, but what it is, is a grouping of, uh, you could say, blood vessels, mainly capillaries. And what that does, what is that extracting from the blood vessels? Not water, the oxygen. It's actually taking that out to help regulate their um, depth, per se, okay? So that re-mirable, that counter-exchange system we talked about, okay? All right, so then what that works with then is this structure as well, okay? So the way the rest of this week will unfold, we're going to wrap this up, okay? Tomorrow you have your vocabulary evaluation, which you'll have time. Let's get those papers handed in on Friday the, the 26th. That's when uh, we'll go ahead and collect them. So I think it's fair to say that when you see fish in an aquarium, that when you see this structure opening up, it's not just respiration that they're doing. What else might it be? What other function? I'll make a better door than a window, I bet. What else must they be doing that's tied in with respiration? has something to do with this here. If they are extracting that oxygen from the bloodstream, it's going into this gland or bladder. What would that be? And you're going to say, I knew that. What structure might it be if it's going to help regulate its depth? 
That's one. Or the gas gland. That's right. Is it? Hopefully, my vision getting that bad. It looks like it is drizzling or it's getting foggy or okay. <sighs> better better dismiss class early today. Let's go home. You need an early dismissal. I don't think that's either. I think we're here for today. We're here. Might as well as make the best of it, right? No. Yes. Okay. You're just being sarcastic. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. What's a funny joke you want to say? Tell. We did that last hour. You don't have one. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. Did you know that Stuart can serenade you? Did you know that? If you're having a bad day, you just got to press his belly. Yeah, do you know that he'll sing to you? Yeah, kind of, yep. Now press his belly one more time. Then I think he starts singing. Yeah. <laughs> that makes any day better, don't it? Wasn't that worth the price of admission? All right. Just took this long to actually get that to take place. I, I don't know. I think sometimes that catches students by surprise that they just don't realize that those things actually make noise. Did anybody not know that? Oh, okay. I stand corrected. Okay. So moving along, okay. So again, the depth where these fish regulate themselves, it's, it's not just breathing that goes through these structures for respiration, but it's also regulating their depth. They want to extract that oxygen to either fill their swim bladder. Should their swim bladder get inflated, what's going to happen? Yes, it will start to... Whether it goes to the surface or not, that, that's possible, but it starts to ascend or move up and, and possibly go to the surface. And then what happens if that swim bladder is compressed then? Then, then it starts to sink. So you might be asking yourself, if this is extracting oxygen all the time, why don't they just continually go to the surface then? Well, my my best presumption would be you just let the oxygen just go straight through the gills okay it's probably instinct that would draw that out of there and, and into uh, their swim bladder to help regulate their depth okay so when we look at animals in the kingdom okay some are what we call monoecious okay uh, earthworms are monoecious, okay? Which means uh, if you've ever looked at earthworms, night crawlers, whichever, uh, there's a storm that rolls through, and then at night you go outside and yeah, I want to go fishing tomorrow, so I'm going to go out and collect some. You probably say night crawlers, not earthworms, but one of the aspects that these animals can do, the earthworms now, is they can reproduce themselves because they're monoecious. They have both male and female sex organs within them. But more advanced animals, like I would presume that once you get to the arthropods and further along, now you're talking about dioecious rather than monoecious. They're actually going to have the uh, separate organs in males and females. Now, that to me, that doesn't mean that earthworms don't go through sexual reproduction. I believe that they can. I don't know, it's a, 
It's a ring structure that's about maybe half an inch behind their head. Okay, that's where you see the earthworms if they're laying next to one another because I would be willing to bet there's at least one hand that goes up, maybe two, when, and we could count Mr. Wagner here as well. How many of you have collected night crawlers before? I was way off, holy cow, okay. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of your hands went up. So what you see happening, a lot of times, what are those night crawlers doing? They're not all by themselves. They might be laying next to uh, another earthworm, and they're together like, well, you probably can't see that, they're together like this, okay? Shut that off. They're laying next to each other like this, okay? And they're probably exchanging genetic information at that time, okay? Because, again, those animals, they can reproduce asexually, but they can probably do it uh, in, in a rudimentary form of sexual reproduction as well. That's monoecious, again, fish, what we call dioecious, okay? Then, okay, we have oviparous, ovoviviparous, and what we call viviparous, I believe is the third one, okay? Here, we're talking about a lot of the mammals, for instance, okay? because those are actually within a placental um, sac, if you want to call it that, okay? I think that's maybe one, okay, that is the last one, okay. Okay, does everyone have this content that wants and or needs it? Okay. This kind of weather just takes a toll on a lot of people. If you're not getting that sunlight, you're not producing vitamin D, and that's perhaps can it can attribute to maybe a lot of this illness. Just just makes people not feel so well if you're not getting enough vitamin D. All right. So then, well, we don't need to go into that. Where the eggs are produced, whether it's a placental mammal going all the way back here to the fish, okay, the ovum would be that of the, the ovaries in that of fish. That's where they develop. And then if it is oviparous, okay, then that's developing inside the womb but without any nourishment. Okay, because on the outside, the ovoviviparous then, okay, develop within the maternal body without additional nourishment. So oddly enough, you could, uh, this process continues all the way through what might be, this is going to be a trick question, and it is a trick question. What would be the most complex animal that we'll discuss within the animal kingdom that still lays eggs? What might do that? Say that again. That's the trick question. That would be the most common answer because there's actually two species of mammals that still 
do this. Okay? And duckbill platypus is one. It's actually an ante, they call it an echidna. That's a close relative of that of the um, duck billed platypus. Mammals still do this. For some reason, nature selected them to do that. Okay, so that's all I have. You have an evaluation tomorrow, and then those papers will collect them on, on Friday. That's the schedule going forward. I would presume that Monday, Tuesday, we'll review. Wednesday and Thursday will be, no, we can probably start reviewing Friday and again on Monday. So your two-part exam will be Tuesday and Wednesday. Then after that on February 1 and February 2, what would you presume that we're going to try to find? Oh, we got to find Nemo. That's right. Okay. So that's our schedule going forward. We'll catch up to you next time.